This video is more of a scientific method approach to science investigations type video where we're talking about specifically analyzing risks to a specific type of organism based on some change that we have done. This is hugely important. There's some good TOK links as, as well here. When we develop new scientific, you know, methods and techniques to help improve lives, improve food crops, design drugs, uh, change carbon emissions, you always have to think about what the potential consequences can be. So for example, a cigarette manufacturing company, they've designed a product, but they haven't gone through the process of analyzing the risks. And so there's all these, you know, government issues that are being talked about, a lot of politics about whose responsibility is it to show that whatever product I'm producing is not going to have a negative effect. Obviously, cigarettes are going to have a negative effect on people's lives. But here's something that's less controversial, I guess compared to cigarettes at least, but still something that is probably on people's minds, and that's the use of genetically modified crops. So you've already learned that you can modify a plant, genetically modify a plant, so that the plant cells actually produce a poison, a poison toxin that will kill specific annoying pests that can actually reduce a crop yield. So it's a very specific, well, it's supposed to be a specific targeted poison called Bt toxin. And the problem is when you genetically modify the corn to produce this, every cell, all parts of the plant actually produce this thing. So even though this little pest corn borer worm thing is eating my leaves and stuff like that, this protein poison is actually showing up in my pollen as well too. So when the corn is producing pollen and the pollen is being spread around it can land on other plants and if there are other bugs that are eating other plants that happen to be tainted with this pollen this modified pollen they can actually get harmed as a result of it so when i created my genetically modified corn i was really just trying to kill this one type of annoying corn borer i wasn't trying to destroy these beautiful monarch butterflies but Anything that you do in an environment could have a large impact because you can't control where this pollen is being spread by wind or by these other visiting insects as well too. So the point is here, the data is not being presented to you, but the idea here is to understand that what you do in science can have consequences that spread out to areas that you haven't thought about. And what we need to do is we need to analyze what those risks are by using data. So analyze data to investigate these possible other risks that may come out. So it actually has been addressed and there have been experiments looking into this particular matter. So you, what you should be able to do is prepare for this kind of data being presented to you so you can actually make your own conclusions because that's what we need to do. We see a scientific paper published. The authors of the paper are claiming this. You look at it and you use your scientific skepticism to be like, hmm, yes, I agree with their approach. No, 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 I'm not so sure. The amount of data they collected, uh, the sources of data that they're collecting, I have some questions about this. Let's see if other scientists have investigated this. Well, it looks like their paper is showing something similar. Okay, okay, and then I'm gonna go do my own investigation, and then you come and you kind of draw these conclusions, you put it together, and then present it to help us understand more about genetically modified foods. There are a lot of people that are scared about this kind of stuff. You mess with DNA, or you messing with life itself and the origins of life anyways opens up a bunch of discussions but the point is you got to start somewhere and data is a great place to start when having a discussion about changing policies